Hey everyone, thanks for tuning in. Welcome back to the fourth episode in our series covering every single one of Prince's albums, bringing you the deep facts and separating the truth from the fiction. Today, we are covering Prince's fourth album, The One and Only Controversy. Before we get started, please consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already, and hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss any of our videos. Let's do this. So, first off, one piece of Prince folklore that has been extensively covered, perhaps best by our friend Nightchild in his video, is the episode about Prince opening for the Rolling Stones and getting booed off stage on the 9th and 11th of October 1981. But what you perhaps didn't know is that just a few days earlier, Prince played a very special show in his hometown of Minneapolis to prepare for these Rolling Stones shows. On the 5th of October 1981, Prince and the band performed a secret gig at the venue that would go on to become the most closely linked venue of his career. Of course, we're talking about First Avenue, but back then it wasn't even called First Avenue yet, it was called Sam's. And this was only Prince's second ever performance there, the first being earlier that same year on the Dirty Mind tour. In true Prince mystique, this was a secret show. The band were billed under the name Controversy. And remember, the album had only just come out, so most didn't yet associate that word with Prince. There was no promotion for the show being a secret gig, no physical tickets issued, and the venue sold out completely purely by word of mouth. The other historical fact about this specific gig? It was the debut of Prince's then brand new bass player Brown Mark. This makes both Mark and Wendy two years later as the two members of the revolution to both make their live debuts with Prince at the exact same venue. One more historical fact about this gig, it's rumoured that fellow Minnesotan music legend Bob Dylan was in attendance. Second fact, Do Me Baby is one of Prince's most iconic slow jams. In his unfinished memoir The Beautiful Ones, Prince refers to that song as his jam. So it might be surprising to learn that the original basis of the song was actually written by or with Andre Simone. You see, in February of 1979, Prince and Andre had a day of studio work in New York, led by Pepe Willie. The songs were intended for Tony Sylvester, leader of the group The Main Ingredient, with the idea that the songs would be produced by Tony for the group Little Anthony and the Imperials. Prince and Andre worked on four songs for them during that session, and then hung around at the studio after the session was done to work on a song for themselves. It's during that time that Andre and Prince came up with Do Me Baby, and the version of the song recorded on that day has Andre, not Prince, on lead vocals. Fact number three. Although Do Me Baby is an enduring song in Prince's catalogue and an absolute fan favourite, audience reaction to the song at first wasn't so hot. It seems strange to say, and perhaps it was just down to poor marketing, but the song failed to chart at all as a single. Prince and Warners gave the album one last shot, releasing Sexuality as a fourth single in three territories only, West Germany, Japan and Australia. But that single also failed to chart in any of those markets, despite having one of Prince's perhaps lesser known by the general public music videos at that point. Fact number four. Sam's, aka First Avenue, wasn't the only venue that would become iconic for Prince that he'd start a relationship with in 1981. Many know that the song Private Joy would become the first song that Prince released that featured a drum machine on it, but what you might not know is that it was also the first song that Prince worked on at LA-based studio Sunset Sound. That studio, of course, would go on to be the place where Prince recorded many of his biggest hits throughout the 80s, up until Paisley Park was built and Prince started primarily recording there in 1988. You see, Prince had first started recording around this time at a nearby studio in LA named Hollywood Sound. 
but technical problems there meant that they needed to find a new studio. Thus, Prince moved over to Sunset Sound, and that became his studio of choice for the next several years. Fact number five. It's always been assumed that Prince was pretty much the sole musician on the Controversy album, aside from the song Jack You Off, which contains musical parts from Dr. Fink, Lisa, and Bobby Z. But in Morris Day's recent autobiography on Time, he claims that it is actually him playing drums on both Controversy the title track and the full extended mix of Let's Work, which allegedly saw Prince and Morris literally swap places in the studio for Morris to be hitting the skins once the extended part of the song kicks in. The final fact. Speaking of the song Jack You Off, this was one of the days where multiple songs were completed in the same day. Another song, entitled Make You Mine, was recorded the exact same day and remains unreleased. If we ever get a deluxe reissue of Controversy, looking at you, Prince Estate, then hopefully that song appears on there. Speaking of unreleased songs, other unreleased songs from the Controversy era include songs named Delivery Boy, Heart Attack, and Susan, named after Susan Moonsey from Vanity 6, who was dating Prince at the time. One other song done around that time is the hilariously named Hump You. And I think we can probably guess what that song is about. That's it for this video. Hope you enjoyed this deep dive into Prince's legendary controversy album. My name is Casey Rain. We are The Violet Reality. Please subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, leave us a comment, and we'll catch you next time for more facts you didn't know. Peace. Hi, I'm Elisa Fiorillo, and you're watching The Violet Reality on YouTube. All things Prince! <laughs>